Hello, and welcome to the Lancaster Patriot Podcast. My name is Chris Hume, and it is January 19th in the year of our Lord, 2024. Today, I want to continue our coverage and analysis of the Amos Miller story, the Amish farmer here in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, who has been told by the state that he is not allowed to sell hundreds, thousands of items in his farm store. He's not allowed to sell them, not allowed to move them. The Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture has placed a detainment order on Amos Miller's food. His crime, he has not registered with the state. He has not asked the state for permission to obey God. He is not licensed or registered with the state. That's how his customers want it. That's how Amos wants it. Amos does not sell his food in grocery stores. He does not sell it at roadside stands. It is his private buying club. His members go out of their way to purchase his food. Now, the state of Pennsylvania says that's a no-no. You have to get our permission before you sell anything to anyone, essentially. Now, Representative Dave Zimmerman, he's a Republican. Uh, His district covers parts of Lancaster County. His district does not cover where Amos Miller lives, and we'll, we'll touch on that in a moment. But Dave Zimmerman, he is part of the Agricultural Committee here in the state of Pennsylvania, up in Harrisburg, the state capital. Uh, again, he is in Lancaster County. He's very close to what's happening with Amos Miller, even if it's not his district. But perhaps one of the most important reasons, or the most important reason that I have spent some time focusing on Dave Zimmerman's response to this is because Dave Zimmerman, here in Lancaster County, supposedly is one of the most ardent supporters of liberty and freedom and quote-unquote limited government. At least that's the way he's been presented among conservatives, among patriots, if you will. Um, But, you know, to be honest, you know, Rep Zimmerman, in the past I've alluded to some concerns I've had with him, but we've spent plenty of time on this podcast and in my editorials dealing with other Republican, quote unquote, you know, these conservatives like like um, Doug Mastriano. Uh, obviously, a lot of people didn't like that I would have any critique of Doug Mastriano during his bid for governor. Of course, he promoted, you know, government schools, uh, promoting billions of dollars going to the government schools. His parental rights bill uh, really ultimately was a state. The state had the right to tell you what to do with your children, ultimately. Uh, So I'm not going to rehash all those things, but uh, certainly uh, on this show and on these editorials, uh, we haven't singled out Dave Zimmerman, but I am focusing on him now uh, because I think this is demonstrative of the problem we have within the quote-unquote conservative movement. Here is a man who supposedly is the last bulwark against some of these, you know, corrupt GOP leaders like Ryan Ahmet and uh, who's, he's in the Senate, but, and then you have Brian Cutler in the House and Plenty of times on this show, I've spoken about Brian Cutler, certainly have my critiques of him as well. But I have a deeper concern, I think, for the supposedly conservative, supposedly Christian representatives who purport to be about freedom and liberty, then when they go against freedom and liberty, when they go against the law word of God, I think that is is worse than someone who you know up front. Oh, this guy's this guy's not about liberty. This guy's a statist. You know, uh, Brian Cutler just completely corrupt. You know, no trust. But Dave Zimmerman's a guy where you're like, okay, could this be someone who actually uh, promotes the principles of liberty and freedom and the principles of God's word in Harrisburg? You know, that's the hope of so many people. And this whole Amos Miller situation, I believe, has revealed. Um, what I had concerns about all along. And and I've spoken with uh, Representative Dave Zimmerman in the past. None of this is a blind side. I've told Dave Zimmerman privately, I said, I will never support you uh, if you keep, since you vote for these budgets that give millions and billions of dollars, I believe, to the government school system, you continue to prop up this statist system. Uh, I can't support that. Uh, you need to reject all these statist measures where we have this, this idea of, you know, forced taxation funding the government school system. So, you know, this isn't new. It's not like all of a sudden I'm like, oh, whoa, Dave Zimmerman, now I'm going to come out and uh, critique him. Um, I've shared these things in the past with with Dave Zimmerman. And, uh, you know, I'm not really interested in, my primary goal is not to to make friends, but I would say that the Bible says, faithful are the wounds of a friend, profuse are the kisses of an enemy. That's Proverbs 27, verse 6. So if we are to have friends, we need to tell them the truth. And any of you out there who, who may be uh, close to Dave Zimmerman or even Doug Mastriano, if you're really 
friends with these politicians. They always got to be careful. I mean, these politicians will, will, they will, they will say they're friends with a lot of people when it suits them. But biblically, a faithful friend is someone who will tell the truth, even if it hurts. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. So I want us to analyze Dave Zimmerman's response to Amos Miller, and specifically a statement that he put out recently. So just a bit of a background here. Uh, On January 4th, Amos Miller's farm was raided by the state of Pennsylvania. They had a search warrant. They would not let Amos Miller into his own farm store. They spent hours in there going through his property, seizing some of his property, um, telling him then essentially that he can't sell. I guess it's not all of his property, but hundreds, thousands of items, uh, walk-in cooler, walk-in freezer, tags placed all over the place inside there telling him you cannot move this product, you cannot sell it, essentially under the order of who I call the tyrant, Russell Redding, the secretary of the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture. Now, uh, we've covered this a lot, so I don't want to spend too much time on those details, but Dave Zimmerman, he released a video where he interviewed Russell Redding. That's the secretary of the PA Department of Agriculture, Russell Redding. Uh, And I covered that on the last episode, this interview between Zimmerman and Redding. Now, in that interview, Zimmerman was pretty careful uh, not to make his own position known. In fact, he later applauded himself, essentially, for getting Redding to talk, right? And, and even in this, this statement I'll read, Zimmerman's like, well, I'm the only representative who got Redding to give his position on Amos Miller. As if we didn't already know where Redding stood on Amos Miller. I mean, it's pretty clear when your department and you sign the order, you sign the extension order saying you are not allowed to sell any of this food um, based on my authority. We knew where Redding stood. Now, in that video, Zimmerman was very careful not to really tip his hand. You know, he kind of wanted to come across as, you know, a lot of people don't have trust in the government. You know, what's this fine line? So it was a very typical politician, you know, Zimmerman not making his position known. He could go either way. He could say, well, yeah, maybe I support Amos Miller. Maybe I don't. So that was pretty disappointing. Uh, And then, so between January 4th was when the raid happened, and then the afternoon of January 17th, so that's about almost two weeks, uh, Rep Zimmerman posted several things on his Facebook page, including, and I posted this online, a picture of him and several other representatives, including Tom Jones uh, and Keith Greiner, holding, uh, doing a toast, a milk toast, that's kind of ironic, a milk toast uh, to the Pennsylvania dairy and industry in Harrisburg. Meanwhile, uh, Amos Miller is under attack um, for having the audacity to, to serve his private buying club members the food they want. So Zimmerman's posting several things over that two-week period. Uh, he's posting about uh, the celebrity milking contest at the farm show, driver's license center closures, government grants to government schools. He even put out a press release about a William Penn statue in Philadelphia. Again, that's not in his district, but he has no problem putting that up there. So I began to wonder if Zimmerman would come out with a public statement of his own, affirming what to me was pretty clear from the interview with Redding, namely that Zimmerman stands against Amos Miller and Zimmerman stands against our freedom to make our own food choices without government control. But by the afternoon of January 17th, uh, there was still nothing from Zimmerman that was posted. I mean, I could go off of his video and some of the comments he made in response to actually my video, but there was no public statement from Zimmerman saying, I stand against Amos Miller, what he's doing is wrong. So on January 17th, At 3.03 p.m., I contacted someone in Zimmerman's office and I asked this question. Still no public statement from Rep. Zimmerman on Amos Miller ordeal? Just one about William Penn? Now, I did not receive a response from that question. However, 57 minutes later, Zimmerman posted a public statement on his official Facebook page regarding Amos Miller. Coincidence? Perhaps. You know, maybe it's a complete coincidence. But you know what? There is a reason uh, that a politician like Zimmerman will wait as long as he can before he makes his position known, right? You know, I got to play the political wins. I I don't want to upset upset leadership. You know, I don't want to get removed from my committees. Uh, You know, what are the people thinking? Uh, You know, how is this going to affect my reelection? All these things, you know, on and on and on. So, you know, there's really no point for Zimmerman if the people don't care, if the people aren't going to hold him to account for his support of tyranny. They can only hurt him to come out and support Amos Miller because now he's going to get Russell Redding against him. So 
Zimmerman waits and waits and waits until finally, again, maybe a pure coincidence, 57 minutes after I reach out to his office and say, hey, when's your statement coming? It comes out. He releases this statement, and it is what I expected uh, based on, again, his comments in the interview and other stuff he posted. So this statement by Rep Zimmerman, it's a, a great example. It's a horrible example, but it's, it's an example of the impact of statism on the American mind. And though this may, get, this may go a bit long, it behooves us to understand how this man, Dave Zimmerman, is potentially, and this is going to be the argument I make, potentially in some ways, don't get your panties in a bunch, you know, I know Dave Zimmerman is different th- th- than the Democrats, but there are ways that this is more concerning for me. In one sense, I think a man like Dave Zimmerman could do more harm and could do more to push Lancaster County further into statism than any other politician. Now, how could I say that, right? Isn't Zimmerman one of the few who opposes the Democrats and even opposes GOP leadership? Well, that's one of my challenges with him is, is what, what are you doing to actually oppose it boldly and defiantly? But here's my concern. Th- this is why I think uh, these so-called patriots who are actually statists are more dangerous than the ones that are openly statists. If Zimmerman is able to coax the so-called patriots in Lancaster County and Pennsylvania, wherever, if he can coax them into accepting his statist ways, more damage will have been done to the cause of liberty than if anyone else pushed it, right? I mean, if, if Governor Shapiro, you know, a Marxist or a Fetterman, if he's still even alive, if, if these guys push statism, we know, we know they're going to do that. Right, the Marxist Democrats, even the fat cats and GOP leadership, Amit and Cutler. I mean, most people know what these guys are all about. Their agenda is big government, statism all the way. They're obviously statist tyrants. Now, Zimmerman supposedly represents something different, which is why, in this case, his complete surrender to the nanny state is so damaging. And we'll we'll cover this more as we go, but. That's the foundation for this, and I'm going to bring that back up. Why Zimmerman supporting Russell Redding and the statist government of Pennsylvania here is is so much more damaging than if, you know, Brian Cutler did it or Ryan Ahmet or, of course, a Democrat. And it's the same thing. Mastriano is pretty silent on this as well. I know he's a bit further away, um, but still, he's not that far from Lancaster County. And, uh, you know, all these people, or at least some people say, well, if, if Doug Mastriano were governor, this would not happen. Well, I'd like to see Doug Mastriano then come to Amos's farm, stand with Amos, defy the order. You know what? Right. That's not changing the law, but that's a huge public statement. In any case, let's look at this statement, and I will read every line of this. Um, again, uh, I, wa- I want you to hear the statism from a man like Dave Zimmerman. And this is this is a big problem we have, so we need to be able to understand what is going on here. So let's start with this statement. And here's how Dave Zimmerman starts his statement. I'm sure many of you are aware of the recent events at the Amos Miller Farm in Burdenhand. Let me be very clear. I'm 100% against government overreach and have spent much of my time in the legislature fighting over regulation. My record is clear that I have always been a leading advocate for limited government and a staunch opponent of the bureaucratic state. I have a long record of defending freedom and liberty that is open for all to see. Okay, it seems to me a pretty clearly defensive opening to his statement here, but that's fine. But note what he said. He said 100%. He's 100% against government overreach. And there you have a completely useless talking point that these politicians ever have at the ready. You know, you can bring out these statements. Oh, I'm 100% against government overreach. That sounds good, but that's a nice talking point with zero substance. What is government overreach, Rep Zimmerman, if it is not this? If it is not the government telling me, telling my neighbor that we are not allowed to make our own food choices. We are not allowed to take our own risks when it comes to raw food. I mean, people, I know people who want to eat raw meat specifically for the microbes, the bacteria, the E. coli, whatever. I mean, you're allowed to go smoke, you know, 10 packs of cigarettes a day. Uh, you can even consume raw fish or you got the warning on it. But I can't, we can't make our decision to buy our food from an Amish farmer whom we have reason to believe his food is of far superior quality than the grocery store food with all the chemicals and additives. But again, it's a nice talking point. Oh, I'm against government overreach. 
But how do you define that, Rep. Zimmerman? What is government overreach? Now, to the statist mind, and again, statism, we cover it often on the show, the state is the highest standard. Uh, To the statist mind, which Zimmerman appears to have, the government can reach into any area of life so long as the legislature grants them the authority to do so. So, Uh, We're going to unpack this, but again, nice statement from Zimmerman that he can make and never has to back up. We can say, I'm 100% against government overreach, and the people can go, you know, rah, rah, thank you, Dave Zimmerman. And then Zimmerman can be like, by the way, uh, Amos Miller needs to bow to the state here, and you people out there do not have the competence to make your own food choices. Well, uh, he also says this in that opening statement. He says, my record is clear that I've always been a leading advocate for limited government and a staunch opponent of the bureaucratic state. Now, this is what politicians will often do uh, when they are accused of doing something wrong. Uh, They appeal to their record, of course. It's like a guy being accused of stealing, and uh, he says, well, my record is clear that I've always stood against theft. Okay, if that's true, it only makes you a hypocrite in the current case. All right, like if you are if you are a leading advocate of limited government, again, by what standard? And if you are a staunch opponent of the bureaucratic state, which if I ever saw an example of the bureaucratic state, it is this. When you have state employees and state troopers raiding an Amish farm, uh, even though there's been no complaint against him, you have people that allegedly got sick from his and from some of his products. And that whole mindset of, well, if there's ever a bacteria uh, and, and someone gets sick, well, now it's the responsibility of the, pr- like, thousands of people consume, I mean, there's bacteria in, in food. Most of the time, our bodies are able to handle it. And I'm not going to get into that whole philosophy. But the thing is, we have multiple, multiple cases of, quote unquote, foodborne illnesses happening across the nation in restaurants. I mean, I think over half of the ones that the government recognizes as foodborne illnesses. And in fact, I was just talking to someone half the time, you know, you don't even know necessarily exactly what that's coming from. You go to a restaurant, you eat something, you get sick. Was it the food? Was it the chemicals and additives that were, you know, inadvertently added to the food in the kitchen? I mean, when I worked in the restaurant for five years, I mean, you had, you could have a foreign object in there. You could have chemicals from cleaning, cross-contamination. I mean, in the end, you have to trust the people who are preparing your food and Amos Miller's customers trust him. Does it mean that there's never going to be bacteria or microbes or any of this? Of course not. You know, didn't we learn from COVID that we cannot isolate ourselves and live in a little bubble? You make your choices in life and you deal with the risks. Just like when you eat sushi for crying out loud, you know there's a risk there. In any case, um, politicians will often, oh, I'm, I, you know, look at my record. I'm opposed to this. Well, again, if you are opposed to this, then it just makes you a hypocrite now for standing with the bureaucratic state because rep zimmerman is currently not advocating against the bureaucratic state he is advocating for it now we've touched on this in the past but this is the problem with zimmerman it's the problem of every american statist they reject god's law word and therefore have absolutely no higher standard to appeal to and say that a man-made law is wrong or an overreach. If you don't have a higher standard, there can be no government overreach as long as the legislature has made a law for it. This is why the law of God, the authority of Christ, a transcendent standard is so essential. And we'll cover this more in a few moments, but the status doesn't have that. And so the status can't even use the word overregulation or tyranny because the state is the highest authority. At best, you could say, well, we at least need to make a law about it, Uh, but we have laws about this. People like Zimmerman, I'm not sure what he's voted on, specifically related to the food food safety, quote-unquote, but people like Zimmerman on the Ag Committee, you know, proposing these bills or whatever, they're the ones that have voted into law things like this. And so there can be no overreach in the statist in the statist worldview. You have to have the Christian worldview that posits a law above man's to say any any law to be able to say a law is wrong. Now, keep in mind, again, I mentioned this in the opening, that Zimmerman's long record includes voting multiple times for a gargantuan state budget with billions of dollars going to an anti-Christ government education scheme founded on forced taxation on the forced taxation of the Pennsylvanians that Zimmerman supposedly um, is for. Now, I've called him out on this again privately, and I think I have publicly as well, and I'm happy to do so again. Stop supporting the statist 
educational scheme do not vote for the budget. And it's like, oh, well, the, the, our, our, our government's going to have to shut down. And it's like when the, when the representatives weren't in Harrisburg because there was this stalemate or standstill and, and all these Republican reps are like, we need to get back to work for you. Call on, uh, you know, Cutler appointed some Democrat or whatever, to this, however it works, to the Speaker of the House. And these Republican reps are like, we need to get back to work. Call on these Democrats to let us get back to work for you. And uh, some of us who understand the concepts of justice and liberty are like, uh, no, we don't want you back in Harrisburg. Uh, the longer we can keep you out of Harrisburg, the better off we are. We don't need any more of these man-made laws. So yeah, long record of um, continuing the status tradition uh, for Dave Zimmerman. All right, well, let's continue on with his statement here. He says, I also recognize that while limiting the government is critical, some government is necessary. As James Madison wrote in Federalist 51, if men were angels, no government would be necessary. Since we are not angels, limited government is needed. By the way, I highly recommend um, the Federalist Papers, yes, but the quote-unquote anti-Federalist Papers, which is, I think, a misnomer for them. Um, but those papers, phenomenal. The anti-Federalists saw what was coming if we adopted the Constitution, and it is almost precisely what we have today in America. They said, if you adopt this Constitution, you will create this gargantuan federal beast that will trample the rights of the people and the states. And, um, and they, they said, you're going to have a, a war between the states. I mean, they, they, they saw all this stuff. And of course, you know, Madison and these guys said, oh, no, 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 you're wrong. And as Luke Saint often points out on the show, and I recommend his book, I'll have, I have some quotes from Luke's book in a moment, you know, even if uh, people like Madison truly believed <clears throat> that their constitution would prevent this, uh, it hasn't. So we can't keep going back and say, well, it wasn't supposed to be this way. Anyway, let's address this comment from uh, Madison and, and Zimmerman as well. So this is the standard defense for statism. It's the American system. If there's not a transcendent standard above the law of man, then Rep. Zimmerman could never applaud Rosa Parks or any of these civil rights activists who said, you know what, the laws that we have in this state, or in Alabama or wherever, you know, these laws are immoral, they're unjust, and I'm going to oppose them. And, and I'm, I'm very confident the Rep. Zimmerman would not want to come out and say, oh no, those civil rights activists who defied these uh, Jim Crow laws or other laws, whatever, and they said, well, no, I'm not going to follow them. I don't think Rep. Zimmerman wants to say they were wrong. I don't think Rep. Zimmerman wants to say, as he'll say later here, that Rosa Parks, to allow her to do that, was uh, to violate our justice system. You know, th that's why, again, there's so much hypocrisy here. Uh, you, you, if, there's, if there is not a standard above man's law, then you can never have civil reform, and civil disobedience is never proper. But of course, and uh, I challenge him, if he disagrees, I challenge him to correct me, Rep. Zimmerman would support the civil rights activists uh, in the American past. And I assume he supports the Boston Tea Party, which was certainly questionable from some standpoints. Uh, I'm sure he supports these acts of civil disobedience. You see, there has to be a standard above man's law. And the only standard that exists above man's law is the transcendent law word of God. So, you know, this is, this is the problem with the statist. You know, he has to agree that Rosa Parks, in violating a man-made law, she, she was right. But then he'll come back later and say that, well, you know, you, Amos Miller can't disobey this law. And then we get into this idea that, well, you know, man's not perfect, therefore government is needed. Okay, let's go with that. But the next paragraph, uh, and I'll read it in a moment here, Zimmerman reveals his statism, namely the state needs to regulate every area of life. And that, that's a non sequitur. It doesn't follow from Madison's statement that since men are not angels, we need government to therefore the state should have some sort of regulation in every industry of man's existence. This is an unbiblical conception of civil government. Civil magistrates exist for the administration of justice, namely the punishment of those who do evil. I cannot stress this enough, and I encourage you all, I encourage Rep. Zimmerman to uh, get a copy of Luke Saint's book, the Sound Doctrine of Theocracy. Get a copy of my book, Seven Statist Sins. I may have sent uh, one of those to Rep. Zimmerman. I know I have given him some things in the past. Read those books, right? Biblical justice is between a man and his neighbor. 
Um, Biblical justice is based on God's eternal law, not man's ever-changing law. And uh, the civil magistrate exists to punish evil, to administer justice, not to regulate our lives. But let's continue on with what Zimmerman says here, because this is going to be his justification. Well, since James Madison said government's necessary, uh, here's what we need for government. Again, keep in mind, I'm not necessarily arguing against James Madison's statement there. Um, If men never sinned, I do not believe you would need a civil magistrate to adjudicate between two people. But we do sin. And so the magistrate is to adjudicate and see that justice is administered when there when a dispute arises, okay? When someone is wronged, then you have the trial, then you have the evidence, and then justice can be applied. It has to be according to God's law, otherwise uh, we will definitely have tyranny as we already have. So this is the next part of Zimmerman's statement. The government has regulations in nearly every industry. Some are necessary, some are clearly over-regulation. Just imagine trying to fly an airplane, commercial or private, without any regulations, or a food industry that has no government standards. There are places in, in the world where this exists. Many of them are called third world countries. Again, we're getting all the, the typical statist arguments here, and this one is, well, without the government in control of all these things, there would be complete chaos Right now, of course, Zimmerman fails to note here, uh, and the statists like to ignore, that many industries were not regulated by the government for thousands of years, even up to modern times, and simply because the government is not regulating something does not mean regulation is not happening. Understand that. The market can regulate many of these industries, and of course, uh, as it relates to food, there's that great book by Upton Sinclair called The Jungle, uh, which I think is in Chicago, in, in, in America, where you had the Industrial Revolution and these big meatpacking industries, and this family moves over from some European country, I think Lithuania. I could be wrong about that. Great book. Sinclair's a, a great author, good writer. Um, and and his, he was a, one of those muckrakers. He was a muckraker. Uh, I remember that term, muckraker, from, from school, where he, would, he was trying to bring about social change. And so he wanted to point out the horrible conditions in these, these meat you know, these meat packing plants. And the book does a very good job of that. Now, how much of it is 100% accurate? I'm not sure, but the book paints these meat packing industries as horrible. Of course, um, I always do wonder if that's the case and that's how horrible it was. Um, and you had this family move, leaving their country uh, like Lithuania or whatever. And in the book, I remember it's like, oh, it was so wonderful to be back in Europe. And now they come to America and it's just horrible. Which if that was the case, you know, People would not have continued to flood, you know, stream to America because of this land of opportunity. So I think there's a bit of uh, dishonesty there. But more importantly, after that book came out, you know, and and these these pushes were made for the government to get involved, Sinclair realized, Upton Sinclair realized that it, it didn't help the industry. The government getting involved only helped the huge meat Packers. It helped the huge industries because they were the ones that were able to get in bed with the politicians, lobby the politicians, and influence the regulations. And so it, it only helped the, the huge industries and it hurt the small ones um, and they could no longer compete. And he said, you know what? This has not helped. This was a failure. In any case, this is what Zimmerman said. He says, the government has regulations in nearly every industry. Well, yeah, we know that's the problem. I mean, I love how Zimmerman just like states that like, yeah, well, we, we regulate everything. So, of course, we're going to regulate this. And uh, I'm sitting here saying, yeah, that's the problem, Rep. Zimmerman. That's what we're talking about. That is the overreach. I want to read a quote from Luke Saint from his excellent book, The Sound Doctrine of Theocracy. I highly recommend you read that book because all of us, me included, we have been, we're so deep in statism that a lot of times we see something happen and we're, we just think, oh, yeah, that's illegal. He shouldn't do that. And then we never stop and say, well, wait a minute. Should that be illegal? Is, is this wrong? Is it evil that this person is doing this? Is it, was it evil that Reuben King was selling rifles and shotguns to people that wanted them? Well, no. But the government gets in there and, and potentially locks him up. He's got sentencing next week. Here's a quote from Luke Saint. In a theocracy, the goal of regulation is to establish guidelines to unify and streamline the expectations of the market, industry, and consumer. 
in Western society, by contrast, in regulating a business, the government ostensibly seeks to control how, when, where, and who does said business. The result is that the baby gets thrown out with the bathwater, as dated ideas and standards are perpetually instituted to control would-be fluid industries and markets. Industries and markets that need both hands free to change and adapt where needed. The government, unfortunately, yet predictably, does not have the best interests of these industries and markets in mind. Every new department that the government creates yields more restrictions and stalls the much-needed advances in the respective fields that they oversee. But as it is in every case, non-governmental regulation was already happening before the government convinced the populace to let them define what regulation is necessary. Again, great quote from Luke Saint, get his book, The Sound Doctrine of Theocracy. Now, as it relates to Amos Miller, it is not true that his food is not regulated. Now, how can that be, Chris? Is, isn't that the whole point of this drama? Statists like Zimmerman and Redding want Amos's food to be regulated, and Amos refuses to allow his food to be regulated? Isn't that what this is all about? Actually, no, that's not it. Here's the thing. Amos Miller's food is regulated. The question is, who is regulating it? His food is being regulated by his customers who at any moment could stop paying top dollar for the, his food is expensive, very expensive. And they could at any moment say, we're not paying for this food anymore. We don't want it. Uh, you have to go out of your way to buy Amos Miller's food. It's not in the grocery stores. It's not at roadside stands. It's not at farmer's markets. You got to go out of your way to either sign up and pay shipping costs or drive to his farm. Some people drive hours. And on top of that, his food is not cheap. So if his products are subpar, the path of least resistance for all his customers is to simply stop buying it. It's far easier and far cheaper to buy the additive-laced, chemical-ridden food from the grocery store than it is to buy Amos Miller's food. His food's regulated by his customers. If Amos Miller's food is making people sick left and right, his customers will stop buying it. There's way more accountability for Amos Miller than there is for these you know, huge stores and this food that gets then mixed around and all over the place. Uh, and then when you're in a restaurant, you don't know if it was the food, was it, the, the, was it not cooked properly, was it the dishwasher who spilled the chemicals into the tray of chicken? Like You have all these things. Amos Miller's food, it, it's, it's, it's controlled rather closely. Um, and if you have a problem with his food, you can tell him and then you can stop buying it from him. Uh, another comment, again, regarding the price of Miller's food, it is expensive, I will say, but that's a feature uh, of the market. However, uh, the market is actually being manipulated by the government here. And what manipulation does in this case is it raises the price for the consumer. So here's an example directly from Amos Miller's farm in this current story. I was speaking with a woman from California, and she was looking for raw beef bones for a broth she needed for her health condition, okay? Again, do we have the freedom to, to try to treat our own illnesses and try to use food, which is an extremely important part of our health? Do we have that freedom in America? I thought we did. Uh, so this woman, she needed raw beef bones, and she wants them from animals that are not these feedlot, commercial, commercially raised animals that are often in horrible conditions. I mean, all these, you know... PETA animal lovers, they should be on Amos Miller's side. Of course, they don't want any animals butchered, but these commercial feedlots, I mean, the conditions are horrible. And here you have Amos Miller raising his animals in the sunlight, in nature. Anyway, this woman in California, the state of California has, with all their laws, and Pennsylvania is not far behind, so don't be haughty, uh, Pennsylvanians. We are heading the way of California. Uh, but California made it virtually impossible for her to get these raw beef bones in her state. So where did she have to turn to get raw beef bones to make her stock, her broth, whatever, for her health? Well, Amos Miller, of course. Now, if the government got out of the food business, more farmers could meet the demand of people like that in California. And you know what? Even Miller's prices would probably go down. So the people this is hurting most is the customers. Uh, you know, Zimmerman says this. He says, there are places in the world where this exists. Many of them are called third world countries. 
Okay, you know, this is a typical boogeyman of, of, of the government's not regulating everything. Uh, America is going to be this backwater country with, you know, we're not even going to have plumbing. There's going to be no private industries to pick up the slack. And we're just going to, you know, uh, we're going to degrade into Haiti or something. Well, I'd like to say to Zimmerman, yeah, there are places in the world where the government controls the food choices. Many of them are called communist nations. So this is, you know, the statist boogeyman, and, and this is the strength of their argument. And, and here's the problem. For so many years and decades and generations, and I'm a product of it, you're a product of it, if you're an American, it's been this idea that the government has to do these things. If the government's not educating our children, oh, what in the world would happen? If the government wasn't managing roads, what would happen? Because they do such a phenomenal job. I don't, you know, you've, every government road I've been on is just pristine, right? If the government wasn't in charge of what food we ate, oh man, this would be disastrous, right? This is a statist mentality, right? And of course, it behooves someone like Representative Zimmerman to promote that idea. I mean, because that's his job. We'll get more to that in a minute. But okay, next, uh, next paragraph from Rep. Zimmerman. I interviewed our PA Secretary of Agriculture so that he could explain to the public his position on Mr. Miller. He did exactly that. I'm also the only legislator in all of Pennsylvania that has said anything about the Miller farm, even though he is not my constituent. Okay, I guess Rep. Zimmerman here, he wants a pat on the back for having the courage to be the only legislator in all of Pennsylvania that has said anything about the Miller Farm. Well, thank you very much, Rep. Zimmerman. Uh, but we already knew where Redding stood by the fact that he authorized the raid on Amos Miller's farm and the detention of thousands of his food products. So I just don't understand why he keeps bringing that up. Like, like it's some badge of honor that he's the one who talked to Russell Redding. Um, and then the whole, well, he's not my constituent comment. I mean... I just think that's pretty pathetic. Uh, you know, if that's your MO, then stop with your press releases about things that happen outside your district. You see, you're happy to post about it when it serves your agenda, even if it's not in your district. Like, oh, there's a William Penn statue. These Marxists want to remove from the, you know, Penn's campus, whatever. And I'm going to post a press release saying, you know, the, the Marxists are going after William Penn, uh, you know, that because that, that promotes my agenda as a, someone out there fighting for you. Uh, you know, I don't really care, to be honest with you. I'd rather every statue in Pennsylvania be torn down, every William Penn statue, even though I wouldn't promote it on William Penn. I think we should go back and listen caref more carefully to what he said. But I'd rather all those statues come down. And yet, we're, and if we are going to be allowed to eat our own food, I'd rather every statue be torn down. But yet Amos Miller is allowed to serve his neighbor and have the freedom, and for me to have the freedom, to make my own food choices. I mean, this is just... It's, it's, it's maddening that, well, I'm fighting for you. Uh, you know, I'm pointing out that they're going to take this statue. I don't really care about the statue. I understand the ideology behind it. But Rep. Zimmerman, you're, you're doing worse. You, you, are, you are doing more harm than a Marxist taking down that statue by refusing to stand for justice in the Amos Miller case. So stop your press releases with stuff outside of your district, right, in areas that your constituents don't live in. Um, so, you know, you post all the time about that other stuff, but in this case, we're supposed to recognize your great condescension, uh, to comment on something happening in your own County, but outside your district. So, you know, so congratulate Rep Zimmerman for having the courage to ask Russell Redding for his position on Amos Miller. Now, you know, we really, really stuck it to the tyrants there. Uh, Russell Redding, please tell us why you are harassing Amos Miller. Well, Amos Miller has to follow all our rules. Reb Zimmerman. Okay. There, I've, I've asked Russ Redding. I mean, I, I don't understand this. Okay, next paragraph. I grew up on a dairy farm and have spent most of my career in agriculture. Every single tank of milk picked up at our farm had a sample taken. It was tested for antibiotics and bacteria. Cows are often treated with antibiotics for uh, mastitis and respiratory issues. Uh, the farmers then discard the, that cow's milk for a few days after treatment. Sometimes, however, bad milk will still get into the tank, which is why testing is necessary. All right. I mean, there's so much there. Some people might want to specifically get their milk from animals that never have been treated with anti antibiotics, whatever. But in the end, you know, Amos Miller, uh, he has his own quality control standards. He has his own testing that he does. You know, his customers could test his products anytime they want. Um, the thing is, 
Do we need the government to do that? This is typical nanny state mentality. The government has to test our food for us. The government has to keep us safe because we're not able to do that. We're not big boys and girls. We can't, we can't make our own food decisions. The government will keep us safe. Um, and, and that's really what this is about. And that's what we're going to get to here in a minute. Uh, listen to what Zimmerman says next. He says, I understand that Mr. Miller does not perform certified tests. He does not allow for regular inspections that every farmer in the state must perform. Other dairy farms are inspected once or twice a year by certified independent inspectors to make sure the milk is handled in a clean way, equipment is sanitized, bulk tank temperatures are correct, and the milking system is functioning properly. These are basic agricultural requirements that every farmer must follow throughout the state. Okay, once again, Amos Miller has his own basic requirements, his own safety requirements, his own quality requirements that his customers are happy with. His customers prefer Amos Miller to be making the decision about his food and his employees than they do the government doing it. And you can hardly blame them. Right? I mean, the government thinks that it can tell us how to live our lives in every area. It's not, as again, it's not that there's not regulation. It's not that there's not testing. Amos Miller does those things. He does not want the government involved, and I can hardly blame him. The government is completely incompetent to tell us what is healthy? What foods are healthy to eat? Go follow the government food pyramid. Go ahead and follow it and eat all the food that they endorse. See how healthy you are as our, as our health continues to decline in this nation. It's not because of people like Amos Miller, okay? It's because of the industrial, commercial food, big food, big pharma, and Rep Zimmerman on the Ag Committee is promoting that world, that nanny state. Um, other dairy farms, he said, are, are inspected once or twice a year. A couple things. First of all, uh, yeah, basically, hey, we force everyone else to follow our statist rules. You better submit too. But actually, there are many other farms that are not doing what these... Uh, there are many farms, I should say, that are doing what Amos Miller is doing, and maybe slightly different ways. But there are other farms out there. And, and these statists make it like, well, Amos Miller is the only one and if we just deal with him, we're, you know, we're going to deal with all this, this bad food that's out there. There are other farmers doing what Amos Miller is doing. Uh, Amos Miller perhaps has been more public. Uh, his, his, his case has been more public. But there are others. I know of them. And they're concerned with the, when they see what happens is happening to Amos Miller. And so they're trying to find loopholes in this man-made law. Well, how can we prevent this from happening to us? Because we're doing the same thing. Because we don't trust the government. And our customers don't trust the government. And, and they want to be able to make their own food choices. I know one place that in their statement, they say, as a customer in this buying club or whatever, I want to get E. coli. I want to be exposed to this bacteria because the government's always going to use that fear. Oh, uh, someone got E. coli somewhere. Now we're going to shut you down, right? And there are many other farmers in Pennsylvania and throughout the nation that are trying to do what Amos Miller is doing, and, and maybe they're doing it better. Maybe they haven't been, you know, attacked yet by the government. So this idea that, you know, every farmer out there is following all these statist rules is nonsense. And as we'll get to in a minute here, and as I touched on on a recent editorial, p nobody takes the thousands and thousands of laws coming from Harrisburg seriously. It, it, it's a joke. It, and that's the problem with man-made law. Nobody's this, sitting there thinking, well... If I'm not following all the laws of Pennsylvania, I'm an evil person. No, people, all the people are saying, well, if I can get around this, I'm going to do it, all right? And um, yeah, let, me, let, me, let me get to that. Actually, I'll bring it up now. So um, we'll talk about raw products in a minute. But for example, in Pennsylvania, it is illegal to sell raw butter, okay? It doesn't matter if you have a license. It doesn't matter if you get a permit. Raw butter, raw cream, you cannot sell them, okay? So what do people do? There are producers that say, well, okay, we have these status laws over here. We know people want the raw milk and butter. We think this is wrong that the state of Pennsylvania is going to tell us whether or not we can sell someone raw butter. So what we're going to do is we're going to label it pet food because the man-made status system, there's a loophole in there. If you sell it as pet food, you can sell it. And so they sell their stuff as pet food. And it's so obvious. They're even like, well, we've, we've produced this for human consumption standards, but since the state of Pennsylvania doesn't let us sell it as human food, we have to label it as pet food by law. It's such a joke. And this is, this is Dave Zimmerman's legacy. I mean, this is what he's standing for. 
it, it's 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 man made onerous tyrannical laws um, that nobody takes seriously, and that's the problem with it. Uh, most people, the government's not going to go after, but when they get someone they want to, well, now they can just use this man made law and, and you, you know wield it as a club to go after Amos Miller. When I guarantee you, there are other people, and it's even in the law. The Secretary of Agriculture can be like, "Well, if I don't think this is that serious, I'll just give you a you know a written warning." It's completely arbitrary. It's not justice. Um, the people, it it makes it's a mockery. And Zimmerman says, "Oh, this is about the justice system. If we let Amos Miller go, it, it's violating our justice system." That is that is uh, it, that's a joke, right? Our our quote unquote justice system is a sham. And it's because of people like Rep Zimmerman, who, who their existence in Harrisburg is to make more laws. And we do not care. These laws, it's just tyranny, layer of tyranny after layer of tyranny after layer of tyranny. You never know when you walk out your door what law you're breaking from Harrisburg, right? You make some cookies and sell them to your neighbor. You're probably breaking the law. Did you get a limited food establishment license? No. Did the state inspect your kitchen, your home-style kitchen like they're supposed to? No. So you're a criminal. Uh, it's a joke, Rep. Zimmerman. It's, it's a joke. And, and here you had a chance to stand for liberty, and you, you, you caved like a house of cards. So let me continue on here. Uh, Mr. Miller's case is not about the buying and selling of raw products, raw milk, raw eggs, raw meat, etc. Of course, he didn't mention raw butter, as some have suggested. Many farmers throughout the state sell raw products. I can, I can go to the local farm show right now to purchase raw products. There are many farmers with roadside stands right here in Lancaster County who sell raw products. Mr. Miller's case is, not, is about following basic agriculture regulations that every other farmer in the state is subject to for the production of safe food. Is it too much to ask our farmers to follow these basic requirements to ensure food safety? Again, uh, is it too much to ask the government to stay out of our business and to stay in its lane of punishing evildoers and let us make our own food choices? Is that too much to ask, Representative Dave Zimmerman? I agree with him on one thing here, though. He says that this is not, this is not about buying and selling raw products. Uh, you're right, Rep. Zimmerman. I think that's part of it. But this is about much more than that. This is about the freedom to buy or sell and consume the food we want. We do not need the nanny state to tell us what is safe to eat. We do not trust the nanny state. It's not there. Most importantly, they have no authority from Christ to tell us what food we can and cannot eat. That is a responsibility that God has given to the family, to the individual. It is our responsibility to take dominion, to feed ourselves, to do business with our neighbor, to buy the food we want. We do not need the state to get involved in that. Um, so yeah, this is not just about raw products. It's part of it because... The state outlaws raw milk and, uh, excuse me, raw butter and raw cream. Um, and it is partly about raw products. You can't sell raw milk without the state, you know, approving your facility. I, I, would, I would trust Amos Miller and, and his food is phenomenal. It's, it's the best food I've eaten. And I would trust that a, a million times over than some facility signed off by some pencil pusher in Harrisburg. And you know what? If I get sick, it's my responsibility to deal with that sickness. And later on, I hope next week we're going to have a show about the nanny state and the medical industry, that when you do get sick because of all this commercially produced food, all these toxins, all this radiation, uh, when you do get sick, then the government comes in and says, well, we're going to tell you how to get better. We made you sick because we didn't give you the freedom to do what you want to do. And, but now we're going to force you, especially if you have children, we're going to force you to get healthy our way. I mean, we are just so deep in statism, it's unbelievable. So it's not simply about raw products, Rep. Zimmerman, you're right. It's about the freedom to buy or consume any food we want, whether it's raw or cooked, whatever. Do we have that freedom? According to you, no, we do not. The state has to approve of it. And again, this is the, the nonsense of, you know, I've spoken before, we've had episodes about drug laws, and, and um, I know some people would, uh, quote-unquote, conservatives, you know, want these drug laws. But the point is, we have to be self-governing. I could go to Lowe's or Home Depot and consume any amount of chemicals I want and put myself in an altered state and potentially kill myself. Is the government going to outlaw, you know, paint? 
we have to be able to govern ourselves. And I think the nanny state we have is, is a judgment on our refusal to do that and us constantly asking the state to take care of us. And you know where that started and where it continues most is the government school system. Parents who send their children to the state to be educated, right, are basically telling the state, look, I am not competent to teach my children. I am not competent to train up my child in the way he should go. I'm incompetent. I can't do this. So please, state, teach my child. I mean, from the status perspective, if that's, if that's where we're at as a people, then you know what? I mean, they should be making our food choices for us. They should be making our food choices. They should be telling us what to wear. I mean, they should be telling us what time we need to go to bed. They should be doing all these things. I mean, because we've told them from the outset, here's my child. I, I don't know how to raise him. Please raise him for me. So yeah, we, we, are, we are, I was going to say we're neck deep in statism. We are drowning in statism. Okay, drowning. We are brainwashed in statism. I told a pastor that once here in Lancaster County, pastor of a large Reformed church, and he's, he was offended. I, I, you say we're brainwashed in statism. Well, this is why. And I guarantee that pastor is not going to stand for Amos Miller because he's brainwashed in statism. Okay, we're almost done here. I knew this would go long. Um, if you're still with me, uh, thanks. I, I know many people, you know, you're busy, you got a lot going on, but this statement from Rep. Zimmerman, I, I needed to address it. Uh, he goes on and says, is the solution to simply ignore Mr. Miller and allow him to violate basic regulations that all other farmers must follow? Again, straw man, there are many farmers not following that. Uh, that would certainly not be fair to other farmers. I believe a good case could potentially be made that some regulations should be changed, but allowing current regulations to be broken would violate our justice system. And, and here it is. Here we get to the crux of the matter for Rep. Zimmerman. You got to follow all the laws, Amos, every single one of them. But as I said, people do not take man-made law seriously because it is so onerous and impossible to follow. Again, producers are selling raw butter as pet food because they know the law is a joke. They know it's not about justice and our justice system. Yeah, you know, that producer that's selling raw butter as pet food, when they know they're actually selling it for people to eat, they're violating our justice system. Lock them up, string them up, you know, hang them up for all the town to see. Evil people selling that butter for people to eat. Rep Zimmerman, please repent of your statism. Oh, those people selling homemade cookies. You know, sometimes I drive by and there's baked goods. Uh, you know, these kids with these stands selling the baked goods. Criminals. Even eggs. If you want to follow the state, you have to follow all their labeling regulations. So if you're buying eggs from your neighbor and that carton's not labeled correctly, violating the state. Where You know, our justice system has been violated. Uh, this is so, so pathetic. Um, the problem is... These legislators and state employees. Okay, here's, here's the real issue, I believe. Obviously, there's injustice, there's control. But the real reason that Rep Zimmerman has to come out and side with Russell Redding against Amos Miller is because as a legislature, as a legislator, and even these state employees that raided the farm, if they were to stand against this, they would have an identity crisis because they would realize we don't need you. I think control is part of it, but to be honest, I think the main reason the state is going after Amos Miller is because if they didn't, how could they justify why they exist as a state employee or legislature? What's my point of existence if it's not to make laws to tell you how to live your life? I mean, they have to do something. Right? And so instead of producing anything, they force, they steal the money from us via forced taxation, and then they use that power they have um, to try to destroy a man and his family and his employees and his business and his customers. They're, they're not producing, they're destroying. And if, Rep Zim I mean, Rep Zimmerman, he's like, well, uh, you know, if we don't follow these regulations... Our justice system is violent. No, if you don't fall, if, if people realize that we don't need you to tell us how to live, then you don't have a reason to exist anymore as a legislator. And Russell Redding and these state employees who do his beck and call, who serve the tyrants, who are just as responsible as Redding and Zimmerman, 
you know, they're going to be, well, why, why am I, why do I have this job if I'm not every now and then going to go out and punish someone for not doing what I say? Amos Miller has to be rated, and this Amos Miller is not the only one. Um, there was stuff happening in the Midwest, and unfortunately, this will probably happen again. Reuben King, the Amish farmer selling rifles and shotguns, I mean, his, his milk products are probably good to go with the state. He's not doing the natural stuff necessarily like Miller, but he was selling rifles and shotguns. So they got to go after him because, again, ATF, state troopers, um, ATF, state troopers, if they're not going to go after, if they're not going after Reuben King, why do they exist? I mean, we got to do something. We have to, we have to justify our existence as this, these statist tyrants. And so that's, that's really what's going on here. Instead of producing, instead of being in the private sector and providing a service, these state troopers, these state employees, these legislators, these heads of the departments, they have to justify their existence. And so they have to go out every so often and punish someone for not living life the way that these statists tell them to. Um, it is absolutely pathetic. I want to read a comment here um, from someone in Idaho. This was a comment, uh, and I think he said he sent this to Zimmerman as well. This is Tim Saint, and he said this, Representative Zimmerman, you remind me of the Nazi brown shirts who were just doing their job. You are a weak man. More specifically, you are an abomination. He who justifies the wicked and he who condemns the righteous are both alike an abomination to the Lord. Now, that might seem like strong language. Well, that's the Bible. The Bible is it, it, it uses strong language because we're not meant to read the Bible and be comfortable in our sin. And that goes back to, you know, the proverb about if faithful are the wounds of a friend, right? If we truly care, even about Rep Zimmerman, call him out for his sin, his tyranny. He's condemning indirectly here a righteous man. Amos Miller has not broken the law of God. And, and you're doing so while claiming to be about justice, it's a, it's, it's, that's, that is abominable. Rep Zimmerman claiming to be about justice while he stands by as this great injustice occurs and is carried out against Amos Miller. Again, uh, if Zimmerman's consistent, he would have had to do the, have done the same thing, uh, you know, during the Jim Crow laws. Our system of justice demands that we enforce all these laws. All you civil reformers, lock, lock them up, punish them. They have to follow all the current regulations. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> Proverbs 17, 26, another very important passage, to impose a fine on a righteous man is not good. Okay, there's a higher standard here, Rep Zimmerman. It, it, it's not, you, you do not make the ultimate law, Rep. Zimmerman. I know you're a legislator. You think you have this authority to make law. Uh, any law you make is subservient to the law of God. And if you use man-made law and the laws that you endorse and the ones that you don't oppose, and if that is used to punish a righteous man, you are in violation. And any state agent who's, who enforces that is in violation of the law word of God. And God is standing against you. He is against you in this. Uh, Rep. Zimmerman also, just to continue this theme, uh, looking at some Bible passages, Rep. Zimmerman also, and, and Tom Jones was right there, and we'll, we'll deal with more with that later. Tom Jones voted in support of a Muslim holiday in the state of Pennsylvania. Um, he said he was willing to talk about it. I messaged him back and said, I want it to be a public conversation. I'm not interested in these private conversations anymore with these representatives. They'll tell you one thing, and it's different publicly. I want a public conversation uh, with Tom Jones defending why he voted for a Muslim holiday in the state of Pennsylvania. And I would also like to know why he's not standing for Amos Miller. Um, but Dave Zimmerman, Tom Jones sends out, they send out their you know, email newsletters and uh, he did, Zimmerman did have his statement for Amos Miller, but at the top of the newsletter, he has this picture of, you know, it's, it's prayer days, you know, we're, we're praying in the Capitol, uh, and what a wonderful thing um, to pray in this Capitol, and the blindness that, that Zimmerman can't see, that Tom Jones can't see. Uh, Proverbs 28, 9, if one turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. Even his prayer is an abomination. 
And then I want to read from Amos, but before I do that, I want to play this clip uh, from Luke Saint. This is under a minute from one of our uh, recent podcasts speaking. It speaks directly to this, that the, the Word of God, God says in the Bible, I hate these religious, I hate your religious observance, your prayers, if you are at the same time promoting injustice. Listen to Luke. I think the average Christian goes into church and they think, well, here I am in the four walls. It's time for me to worship God. And it's time for me to be the statist six days out of the week. Or seven days out of the week. There's statists in church too. You know, what am I, what am I saying? So, you know, the, 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 the average Christian believes when, when, when push comes to shove, I'm just, well, as long as I worship God, everything's okay. No, everything's not okay. As it says in Amos chapter five, I see your worship, but I don't care about your worship. Your worship is crap to me. It's nothing. It's a waste of time. And it's making me more angry because you are letting injustice has happened out there in the culture and then when the christians finally come around to justice okay it is justice what is it it's black lives matter mm. when we finally get around to justice it's uh, this we're, now we're arguing for justice in in the culture this is what i want we need we need to follow him as five yeah let's get out there and do justice ah oh, racial inequality hmm. that's the pro that's the injustice that we have to fight against thank you david platt Amos 5, verse 21, I hate, I despise your feasts. I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the peace offerings of your fattened animals, I will not look upon them. Take away from me the noise of your songs. To the melody of your harps, I will not listen. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. That is what is required of you, Rep. Zimmerman. And the fact that you guys keep doing these prayer meetings and these prayer things in Harrisburg, it's 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 so ostentatious. I mean, this is like the Pharisees here, like, oh yeah, we 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 want to be seen for our, our prayers, but at the same time, we're promoting injustice and you're not willing to lift a finger for the man who is actually serving God, providing products to his neighbors, and refusing to bow to the state. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, truly. You, you ought to be ashamed, um, not just for your actions, but for putting on this facade of a, of a righteous person and saying, that, oh, well, I'm going I'm to pray in the Capitol. Join us for prayer. And then you got Tom Jones there, I, praying to who? I don't, maybe praying with the Muslims. I, I, to their Muslim, we're going you know, to need a holiday in Pennsylvania for the Muslims. It is a mess. Uh, finally here, Rep. Zimmerman ends his statement. My constituents, and this, this will make you feel better, I'm sure. This will make Amos Miller feel better. I mean, he's not, he's not Zimmerman's constituent, but my constituents can be assured that I will continue to stand for the rule of law while continuing to push back against over-regulation. So reassuring. Uh, understand this. If you're in Zimmerman's district, he's not going to defend you, just like he's not defending Amos Miller, Okay. All this political talk nonsense. You know, yeah, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand. I'm going to push back against overregulation. I'll stand for the rule of law, which means that if you're selling your homemade cookies in your neighborhood or exchanging, you know, a pint of milk from your cow with your neighbor, you're going to borrow his, you know, you're going to trade it for a pound of flour, whatever. Zimmerman's not going to stand for you there. He's going to leave you to the statist vultures like he's doing with Amos Miller. If you're selling your eggs and you don't follow the regulations, Dave Zimmerman, he is leaving you to the status vultures. He's probably circling up there with them. This, this is double talk. This is nonsense. Um, yeah, I'm going to stand for the rule of law. Okay. Um, yes, we know what law you will be defending, man-made law. And uh, I would like to hear you, a public statement, Rep. Zimmerman, say that because of your position here, you have to denounce all the civil rights activists. You have to denounce all the, the founding fathers who, who defied the crown. Denounce them all, please. Do it at your next um, press conference from the Rotunda where you're going to be presenting yourself as, as a lover of liberty. Maybe you do another William Penn Day or, or a Founding Father's Day, you know. Uh, and, you, and I want you to say, you know what? I was wrong about all that. You know, we should always follow every single man-made law. It's a rule of law. That's what I stand for. I'd like to hear it. If not, I don't know how else to say it. You're a hypocrite. That's the bottom line. I know people, that's mean. It's, it's the truth. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Now, I want to end with two things. Number one, that 
Rep Zimmerman, remember in the beginning I said he, he poses in one sense more of a danger. Uh, and this is the boiling frog analogy. Of course, you know that analogy when you, if you put uh, frogs in a pot of boiling water, um, they will jump out immediately, obviously assuming they can, they can get out of there. Um, they, will, they will feel the heat and they will get out right away. If you put them in a pot and you slowly increase the temperature of that water, slowly until it reaches boiling point, they will boil to death because they will not sense that they are that the water is getting hotter and hotter and hotter. That's the situation we have with Dave Zimmerman. If the liberals come in, and in some ways they've done this, but if they come in and say, okay, you know what? Right away, we're going to tell you, we make all your food choices. We make all the choices for you. Um, we, and this is kind of what happened in COVID, right? Like th there's going to be a reaction against that. People are going to be like, well, no, you can't do that. This is America. You know, this is the land of the free, right? So that, in, in one sense, and that's one of the reasons why I won't vote for these compromised Republicans. I think they're, in some sense, I think they're worse than the Democrats. I'll only vote for someone who's qualified, someone who loves justice, who fears God. Because the problem is, when, when you have these people in there, like Rep Zimmerman, like Mastriano, uh, people are lulled into this, this sense of security. Okay, well, the water's not boiling, you know, here with, with the Rep Zimmerman and Mastriano. Yeah, but the heat's being turned up little by little. And as these men continue, you know, like I say, like, you know, my challenge to people like Dave Nisley, who's running against uh, Brian Cutler in the southern end of Lancaster County, like, stand firm now, stand on principle. If you lose, you lose. If you win, great. And then if you get, you get, you don't get elected in again, great. Stand on principle because what have you accomplished if you have a career like Dave Zimmerman? You know, he's, he's been in 10 years, I believe. What if he's in 10 more? 20 years. Uh, all you've done uh, is taken us further down the road of statism and you've done it perhaps imperceptibly at times that's a worse place to be than if we have we had the marxist right now say we're taking over full-on communism i think people would oppose that and you know what it that might lead to actually a, a good result because people might be like no this is not what we want but the republicans they get us there slowly um it, it's far more dangerous because people aren't resisting it you know, people aren't resisting Zimmerman. Oh, yeah, I mean, the state should be able to tell you what you can and can't eat. It's in the name of safety, right? That uh, keeps going. Well, the state should tell you now what animals you're allowed to have for your, even to feed your own family. It's all in the name of safety. The state can come in and kill all your ducks uh, in the name of safety, right? This is what we have. And Rep Zimmerman stands behind it. So that's why I believe this is so... And that's why... I'm spending, you know, people, well, why are you focusing on Rep Zimmerman? Why don't you go after, uh, you know, Governor Shapiro? I mean, obviously, Governor Shapiro and Russell Redding are complete Marxists, statists. And I've, I obviously felt that way, you know, that Zimmerman was trending in that direction. But now it's clearly he's with them. The, the point is, and this is one of the reasons why people didn't like some of my editorials on Doug Mastriano. Well, why don't you just go after the Democrats? Well, we do that plenty of times. But if there's someone who is claiming to be about liberty and is promoting statism, that person is potentially more dangerous than, than a Marxist. Uh, they're both dangerous, and they're both rejecting God's law word. Um, one of them, I guess, is just being hypocritical. You know, the quote-unquote conservative is being hypocritical. At least the Marxist is consistent. Um, they're both enemies of Christ and enemies of justice and freedom in society. So anyway... I wasn't able to find the, the, there was some comments I found of a, a woman saying, oh, how would you feel? There was someone who was defending Amos Miller. And then someone said, well, how would you feel if your child got sick from Amos's products? Would you feel differently then? Well, no, I wouldn't feel differently about what the government should be doing. That's my decision. Just like if I eat sushi or allow my children to eat sushi, I'm not going to feel different about the government regulation. If we get sick, I'm, I might feel different about eating sushi, right? Especially from that sushi provider. But that's it's com something called freedom and responsibility uh, and, and, you know, having the, the convictions to, and, and the, I, I wouldn't even say courage, but just being able to make your own choices. And that's what Americans don't want. And again, it goes back to the government school. Send your kids off there. Let the government teach them. Is it any surprise um, that now we have, we have this? right? Government telling us what we can and cannot eat. So that's Rep Zimmerman's statement. Uh, you've heard the whole thing now. Um, that's his, his great stance for liberty. Um, and, and of course, 
Uh, Zimmerman was the first one to ask Russell Redding to clarify his position. So thank you for that, Zimmerman. Really appreciate um, getting to hear from Russ Redding. I mean, obviously we knew what he was going to say, but more importantly, you have clarified your position, which was pretty clear to me after that interview, um, but you've made it even more clear. You stand against Amos Miller. You stand against the freedom of the people to make their own food choices. And unfortunately, there will be many quote-unquote conservatives that say, well, yeah, I mean, we need, we need the government to tell us what's safe. Just see where that ends. I hope you can see pretty clearly already uh, what happened uh, with, with that mentality in 2020. Flawless record for the government, right? Always able to tell us, you know, what's safe and not safe. Well, I encourage you to uh, go to the LancasterPatriot.com slash help Amos for more information about the Amos Miller story. Uh, there you can find a link to donate um, and to help his cause. There's so much tyranny. And then when I read Psalm 10 and the psalmist, it says, you know, oh Lord, why do you stand afar off? You know, this has been um, the struggle of the righteous for generations, but we cannot give up. We can't be discouraged, um, overly discouraged. You know, the Lord is present. Um, he will judge. The Lord of all the earth will do right. The judge of all the earth will do right. And these men and women, from the judges to the department heads to the legislators like Zimmerman to the state troopers and the state agents that come onto people's properties and enforce these edicts, they will give an account. Um, they will give an account. I pray that they would repent, um, but otherwise they will be judged for this. Um, the wages of sin is death. So pray for Amos Miller. Pray for Reuben King, who, as I understand it, let me see if I have any updates here on Reuben King. Let's see here. Yeah, he has sentencing next week, I believe. Reuben King could be could face jail time for selling rifles and shotguns. So this is a tyranny around us. Um, pray that God breaks the teeth of the wicked. For more information about Lancaster Patriot, go to thelancasterpatriot.com. Thank you for listening. Until next time, remember that Christ, not man, is king. So long.